building these characters in an IP and in a story is one thing, but bringing them to life is everything. If they don't come to life, it doesn't really matter how much you write. And that was the nice balance between having a story to tell and building a playable character. When you think about video game development, design isn't necessarily where most people would think about character and acting, but we challenge our, our designers every day that they think about that because it's gonna come across. You know, even when we're setting up a scenario for gameplay reasons, we wanna make sure that each of those beats and those moments is gonna contribute something to the characters. So starting out, we'd usually start with kind of the archetype of what we wanted to convey with the character's emotion and personality. The first character that we started was uh, Galahad as, as more of the dark, hero in the trench coat. We wanted them to have a kind of rugged, battle-hardened warrior feel, but at the same time have some sense of three-dimensionality to the character. Sir Galahad, this matter is not yet over. Of that you can be sure. Galahad is uh, the, the knight who has lived long enough to actually understand life, understand you know relationships and all that, but also become, in so many ways, immune to all of it. He's built a wall. A proper knight must learn to curb his passions. Without passion, monsieur. A man cannot fight. We do not fight men, Marquis. Galahad is kind of a little bit more serious. Lafayette, you know, he's new, he's young. So there's a bit more of a kind of uh, eagerness. He's a little bit more of a risk taker. Men, half breeds, what does it matter? Vive la liberté. He's a modern day man. I mean, uh, he brings a little bit of levity to the situation. But for all his joviality, he also has lived through two wars that have probably taught him in his position more than anybody could have even in a few hundred years. As the uh, kind of apprentice training knight, we wanted a, a nice contrast with him and the kind of more seasoned knights in the order. Do you trust anyone, Mon General? Never accept, always question. Sebastian Mallory is one of the elder Nights. He has lived long enough that he's seen a lot more than anybody else, practically. And so he just had that kind of poise and this sense of kind of this grizzled veteran. Stop for a pint, did you? We kind of kept him a little, not plain, but he, he's a little bit more simple in design. I always looked at him as kind of the old school guy who didn't need all that frilly stuff. We need eyes on the ground amongst the guests. And imagine me with nothing to wear. The moniker Lady Green was given to Isabeau d'Argyle, and she, in our world, is the youngest knight to ever join the Order at, at her age. Her and Galahad have history together, and so we kind of can feel some of that distance that they've had, but at the same time, things are clicking again. You're starting to see them kind of like old times. I'd prefer to have someone more experienced looking out for me. I thought you needed no looking after. She's a grounding force to a lot of people. She speaks her mind. She's uh, as strong and is as deft and as you know skillful as, as Galahad is. Do try not to lag behind. It wouldn't make sense to do the typical video game busty curvy woman, and especially it wouldn't be accurate to the time. I mean, if you looked at the dresses, I mean, they barely had an ounce of skin showing, so we really had to be more creative with, with her design. So on the other end was, you know, how we take kind of broader facial structure and archetype and get it on a highly emotive face that runs in real time. One of the hardest part about characters is that, you know, we're humans, we're people, and we're really, our brain is really trained at recognizing any little flaws or inconsistencies that you would see in another human. We have to deal with almost every facet of human anatomy to make sure it looks correct. We scan the 3D face of an actor and then we take that in-house and we manipulate it, make it slight mutations to make it our character. Every animation of the humans in game is mo-capped and we have head cams mounted on the actor. So we get simultaneous body and facial performance. Most fetching, was she not? I haven't noticed. That is because you are not a Frenchman. You are the most American Frenchman I have ever known. I am a lover of liberty, mon ami. One of the bigger challenges comes from the fact that um, our character's performances that we try to make very authentic and very real uh, is being delivered on a, a set that is a big gray carpet with tons of, you know, really intense bright lights. They're wearing spandex suits with headgear on that has a head-mounted camera that's capturing the face. Working with the people as far as the virtual experience is concerned is actually probably the most challenging. Tell every available knight to converge towards Whitechapel. It's always going to be a balance. It's always going to be a balance of going too far with it where People feel like, okay, I really want mechanics, or too little with it where they get mechanics but they don't get context and immersion. But it's been a great balance, actually, that we've been able to achieve in the last few years. There is no like magical ingredient to the process. It's just a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears. But I think the end result, it really gives a sense of believability and personality of the characters. Roy, where are you going? To finish what we started. This is no time for vengeance. Come to your senses. The technology of being able to make these characters believable and realistic creates that, I think, 
that opportunity for us to kind of sit there and, and make the nuances count and make the things that you maybe would normally skip over for a video game and not really dwell on, on the, the little human beats. We, we try to make sure that those are really woven into the game because for us it really, it really matters. This is for the players.